Hey everybody, how's it going? Um, yeah, just a bit of a different video today. I've upgraded cameras. We're now using the GoPro Hero 11. So we'll see how that this goes. It might need a bit of a refinement and a bit of um, tweaking. But yeah, for today, this will just have to do. Um, it's eight degrees and blowing a gale. Don't let the sun fool you, it's not a very nice day. <laughs> so, for today's bit of shenanigans, we're gonna remove nose cone, radiator, all that stuff. Well, we're gonna remove it, but it's only got like three bolts holding it in, which I've already removed. Um, yeah, and put a big bar on the crank. Let's see if we can get some movement out of it. I don't know if we're going to, but we'll just have to give it a go. It's probably going to be a little bit better than using a pry bar on the actual um, crankshaft. Might get a bit more leverage with it. So, I don't know if this is going to come off or not, but it's pretty rotted out, so I don't think there's much holding it on there. Let's pry bar. I'm not intent on keeping this nose cone because it is very rough there we go so yeah don't cry about it it's buggered There's that bit now if i can sneak that off there we might be able to there we go sneak that one out there might be able to get somewhere. No, that's it. I don't know how much you guys are actually seeing at this, so. Uh, it's all just a bit of an experiment. This seems to be what everyone does. They use a GoPro and a hat mount. And that seems to the way they do it. So that radiator looks pretty good. So that might get checked and reused. Yeah, I wasn't quite expecting that. That's going to be in the way. Hmm, bugger. That might cause some problems. I'll have a bit of a tinker and I'll bring you guys back. Alright, back again. Um, this is really the epitome of where there's a will, there's a way. Um, I've adjusted the camera up a little bit. I noticed it was a bit down in the last sort of video. Um, I'm still trying to work this out. This video might not turn out very good. We'll see how we go. Um, but yeah, apparently three quarter inch or three quarter drive extension fits beautifully in the crank. I suppose bore you'd say. But I had to put a jack under it. You can see the gap there. Yeah, that was closed up. The bolts are missing out of the front engine mount, so she'd all just dropped a bit. So yeah, had to think out of the box a little bit for that. This should give me a nice bit of leverage. Um, try and make a bit of a reference mark maybe on there. Something like that. Now if I can come... There we go. It's better. Alright, we'll get another bit of pipe because that by itself isn't going to do much. Alright, we've got the pipe. Let's have a bit of a, this might just tighten it up or it might do something. Yeah, as I thought, just tightening it up.
cam on. Nah. Alright. Well, that's a bit of a bummer. Uh, so, this has been soaking for three weeks now, I think. So it's had, a, had enough time to sort of break free if it was going to. Um, that's not good. I'm going, probably going to have to pull the head off it, I think. I don't know if that's going to be today's job or not. Hmm. Well, it's a different day. Um, yeah, had a bit of a issue the other day. Had to get the hell out of here. So I'm up here today, finishing shit off. Um, we're going to pull the head, hopefully. Uh, and have a look, see, see what's going on there. But just haven't had a lot of time to work on this thing. Not as much as I'd want. some gloves on oh well need some spanners try to gloves some pocket Exhaust manifold first. Ooh, wrong size. There you go. Don't know how you're going to go with that sun, but we'll just see. there for the moment. This one's a different no, one of them's a different size I think. Hopefully not getting too much wind noise. It's a well I shouldn't keep apologizing for it because it, it just where we are here it is always windy. So I'll just apologize once more and you get you get the picture. It's always going to be windy. Unless I'm inside. Nice 
first catch alternator. Generator, I should say. At least know this stuff. Ugh. It's hard to get off. So we don't have a lot of time. It's pretty late in the afternoon. I'll be doing house stuff. Trying to get water pump working and that was an absolute disaster. Didn't flood the house, but yeah, just didn't go well. Let's put this back in here so I don't lose any of them. I think that was the bolt out there. It's an odd bolt. I think I've got some more of these, so it won't matter. I can put some proper forwards and bolts in there with all the washers and other hardware. that out if it'll come out and then a couple of spanners all right I'll get organized and I'll bring you back all right just got a few things prepared now if I haven't mentioned um, I pulled the injectors the other day and the injection pump just mainly so I can get easier access into the cylinders um, I should record it but yeah I was a bit keen and got stuck into it. So, get this fuel filter off. I've cracked a few things off just to make sure they come off. So, you don't have to watch me fanning around and swear and curse at things. And surprisingly, that temp sender just came straight out. Something's actually going right today. I can tell you, it's the only thing that has. <laughs> it's alright though, you get days like that. Alright. Just down there somewhere. Stay. Oh, the dogs are out. Handy. Oh, there it is. Got it. Oh, I don't know if I mentioned that injection pump was completely seized. Which is no surprise. Like everything else on this tractor. And that's all off, they're off. Oh yeah, this spill pipe. I think that's about it, and then we're ready to rock and roll. Pull some head bolts, get the push rods out. I'll leave all the head gear on it. I'm not gonna fanny around with that. They even come pre-prepared. And yes, I did crack one or two head bolts just to make sure I didn't need the big bar. Oh, you nearly do. I probably should do that one. If I was smart, I would have brought the rattle gun, but I am not. It's still sitting at home. It's not the end of the world, though. I'll probably edit most of this out for you. So you don't have to watch all this. Because at the rate we're going, this is yeah, this motor is not going to go back together as it is. It's going to need a full rebuild, I reckon. Well, you never know. Might pull apart, and it might be absolutely knackered and go in the parts bin. We'll see.
Get out. Get out. And yes, don't ever try. I'm not putting the push rods in order. If you don't like it, I don't care. I've done it plenty of times before. It's never been a problem. That's the one. Across. Yeah. There's the problem, child. Can I go? So far, if you're going to take that apart, uh, if you're going to take um, the head off that way, take the push rods out first. Make your life a lot easier. And for first time players, these ones have rotator caps, so don't lose them. If you don't know what a rotator cap or a lash cap is, it's this little cup. It sits on top of the valves. I think intake, only one lot has them. Yeah, I think it's intakes. All right, that's that. Bit of shenanigans done. Head's already lifted thanks to the valves. Move some stuff out of the way. Let's see what sort of carnage we've got in here. Oh, that's got a bit of weight to it. Bit of gravity. Ooh, nummy. Yeah, it's got a heap of ring ridge. Only in that one. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's so much crustiness in that cylinder. You actually feel a ridge in the bore where it's been locked up and then freed and then sat again. Oh yeah. Number four is the problem child, I would say. Oh, well, they all are. It's got a massive ridge in that one. Not so much in the others. It's weird, unless that's a rust ridge. It must be a rust ridge, not a ring ridge. Because that's pretty epic. Looking through the glove, I can feel like there's a huge lip there. It might be like this one, might be a ridge of rust, not so much um, a wear ridge. Still got the little locators, it's nice. The locators on that one are just rotted off, they're gone. Alright, I'm going to wash, well, wipe my hands, and I'm going to try and get some of that stuff out of there so you guys can see bit better what's going on. All right, back again. I don't know how well this is all going to come out. He's really nasty in there. <laughs> Trying to shade you a bit from the sun. And yes, for some reason this cylinder has a massive ring ridge in it. But only on one side. So, no. But yeah, you can see, it, it, it's not good. The deck looks okay, as far as I can tell. Haven't really, you got to clean it all up and, you know, go over it pretty well. But it's nothing that I didn't expect. I've seen them crack between the liners and this is the only issue now because having the head off 
if you try and break it loose, you'll just push the liners out. So, yeah. I'm not real sure whether or not just to put new liners and whatnot in it. Well, that's probably what's going to happen. Head, well, it's hard to say until you clean it all up, but doesn't look like it's got mashed valves or anything like that. It looks like it might be salvageable. Also, you don't really know until you cleaned it properly, which is not going to happen here. I like to take that home and give her a good soak and good clean and you know go through it. All that sort of fun stuff. But all in all, you know, not the end of the world. What I was sort of expecting, really. But yeah, that's why we couldn't break it loose. It's just too much rust. If you notice, when I first got the head off, though, cylinder three was pretty much empty. So that cylinder had done what it should have done. The liquid penetrated down the side past the rings so that cylinder probably you know you probably could free that one up but there are these other ones because so I've seen a lot of people use like a block of wood and a big hammer and pound on the top of the pistons and try and break them loose that might work here but it'll, it'll pop all the liners up and then you have to reseal them and well if pulling the liners out they might as well go in the bin just buy new ones instead of pulling it apart multiple times because this thing, it, oh, we could free it and we'd get it going. That's that's a definite. But how well is it going to go? But the pitting in those walls or those liners, like, it's just got to, it's going to be a smoker. It's going to use oil. Probably won't go that well. It might go okay if you're lucky. So the next. Next step, I suppose, we'll pull the front off and we'll pull the actual engine out, strip it all down, clean it. But I don't know when that's actually going to happen. So we've got a lot going on at the moment and yeah, no nice shed yet to do it in. So yeah, I'll have to have a think about that, see where I can maybe make some space to be able to do something with it. Because the the best way to do it now would be to pull that motor, just um, paint strip, have it all dipped, have the head dipped, everything stripped of paint, measured, checked, crank ground if need be, new liners, new pistons, new rings, bearings, the whole nine yards, put it all together, paint it, and it's all new, it's all good, then get the other tractor, drag that out, strip it down, same thing, just go through it, paint it and do it all once but the issue I've got is I've got nowhere really good to do that at the moment so at this point in time I'm thinking the motor will come out to be cleaned really well but not paint stripped we'll go through the motor make sure it's okay there's nothing nasty in there the tolerances of like on the crank and stuff are you know okay I wouldn't not exactly gonna say I'm gonna you know grind the crank and make it all as new because there's no real point if it's a little bit loose it's not going to matter on these old things as long as the rings are good like bore clearances which they will be because it's all new you know if there's a tiny bit of extra clearance on the crank it's you're not going to notice it and it's only going to you know the amount of hours i'm going to put on it it's not going to matter it's literally just going to do a bit of this bit of that most of the time it'll be just tucked away hopefully by then in the new shed so but I'm not going to paint it and just leave it outside like that there's no point so until the shed is done this thing is not getting any paint but on the other side I can look at it I can mechanically restore it and get it all perfect so then I know it's all right it doesn't have to come apart again and now I can strip all the tin work off it strip the paint as much as I can clean it all up and yeah, find a lick of paint back together and it's going, then it doesn't have to be touched again. 
besides regular maintenance. And just to clarify if anyone gets confused, this tractor, this tractor in front of me is a parts tractor. I'm 90% sure we're not going to fix it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the other one seems a lot more viable option. Everything I look at on this thing is either worn out or been booger welded back together or broken. And a classic example. Come around here, keep out the sun. Yeah, it's supposed to be a bolt and a washer that holds that on, not weld. So, someone had a bit of a go at that. The whole tractor's like it. Oh, for anyone who was wondering, I did buy a new exhaust for the tractor. I haven't tried it out yet. Might do a video on that, maybe. But, yeah, I don't think this one's going to come back. And I've been looking at the casting codes. I think it's had another motor in it. I might go over the casting codes of it. I've got, I took both casting codes off both tractors because they both should be 63s. But when you look at the actual codes, because I'm, my understanding, oh, if I can get out of the sun here, if you look in here, oh, I don't know how well this is going to come out. I'm pretty sure this number here at the end, 63, I think that identifies the year of manufacture. But that would have been put on in Australia. So they date a bit before that. So looking at the codes, I think the casting on the block was 62. I think the gearbox was 63. The top cover was sometime in 62. And the other one, I think gearbox was 60, late 62 and top cover seemed to be late 62. So if I put that motor in the other one, the codes are going to be probably line up better than what they did in this one. But I know there's another code on the actual back end. I think it's down underneath. I'm not quite sure. I'll have to have a look at that. I might dig that code out on both of them, work it out. And, um, yeah, do a video on the codes of them. Because I really, I like the idea of having, I suppose you'd say a matching numbers tractor. But I don't think that's actually a thing. So, as long as they're all, you know, within, I don't know, I don't know what the actual gap would be, but I would assume six months, you'd sort of safely say it's a matching numbers. So I've got a couple of old motorcycles, I know they're the same, you don't get a matching frame number and a matching engine number, but they're supposed to be within 300 I think, or uh, there is a number, and I think that was the, each batch, because they do a batch of engines, a batch of frames or whatever, and then they just combine the, the two batches, so it have to be within X amount of digits, so this probably would be the same. I'm not quite sure, I, yeah. But by the looks of it, yeah, if I put this engine in the other tractor, it'd be pretty closer than what it is at the moment. Like, it's, yeah, it's never going to be a fully original tractor because it's bits of this and bits of that. But I can make it look, you know, like it's uh, supposed to be original. Um, another thing I noticed too, just chatting away here, fuel pump. I didn't think these ones were supposed to have a glass on them. I thought they were just a like a cover. That's something I haven't seen before except for this one. Maybe it's just me and I might be just the replacement ones don't have the glass on them anymore. So yeah I thought that was a bit, a bit of an odd thing I noticed when I first got it. I thought all the later ones they deleted the I suppose bale and the glass and just had a cap with a screw in the centre. But, I don't know. Maybe they're just the replacement ones. Um, yeah, I think that's about it for the moment. If there's anything else you want to know about it, just hit me up and I'll see what I can do. I'm trying to get as many videos out on this thing as I can, but it's bloody hard at the moment. Because this 
track. This is my property, but I don't live here. And it's an hour from my house, so usually when I'm coming up here, I'm doing house stuff and you know every, everything else. So I'm trying to fit in as much as I possibly can on this, but we're getting into winter now, so that is gonna yeah slow me down a fair bit. Definitely not gonna be anything painted. I reckon we might be able to freshen this motor up and get another one. Hopefully by the end of winter, maybe. We'll see. Alright, you lot have fun. If you like the video, yeah, share, like, subscribe, you know, all the usual stuff they tell you to say at the end of the videos. Alright, I'll see you guys in the next one.